guys and welcome back to my channel, my orchid channel. And today I'm going to show you what's in bloom and spike at the end of February in um, 2021. And today I can brag about all the snow we got here up in the north. Now you can see for yourself, it's really happening for real. Well, so many years ago we had snow for quite uh, this long period of time, so I... <laughs> I love it. I just love it. It'll really light us up and brighten us up my day. So <laughs> it's beautiful. And uh, I don't have to listen to the drilling <laughs> the whole morning anymore since the handyman has been working on the facade on the house, on my house where I live for so many years now. Cannot drill because they have to get rid of their snow first. Yay! But what do we see? It's my Phalaenopsis trilleriana. She's also brightening up this whole window of mine. So she's in flower and she opened up her last bud, this one, yesterday. Look at this one. Look at the gap. Look at the, uh, the tongue. Look at the beautiful pale pink, lovely, lovely spotted orchid. You can see the spots. Uh, it's got some, a few spots on most part of this orchid, so, well, they're, they're quite difficult to see, but they are there. Last year, I, I snapped a flower spike. Uh, it got stuck between a drawer and my cupboard, so I just snapped it, and, well, but in return, it branched, and it gave me a, a couple of flowers. I don't remember now, but four or five, perhaps. But this time, she gave me seven flowers. Lovely ones on a 50 centimeter long flower spike. Oh, yeah. And the Phalaenopsis itself, the plant, is really growing on. I got it as a seedling four years ago from Hans Christiansen in Denmark. And yeah, and it's um, this one is already branching. You can see it more properly. It's branching in places, in quite a few places here. But this one's going to give me a couple of more, a new set of blooms in a while. So, yeah, this one is a keeper and a really, really vigorous orchid. I can really recommend this one. And she's a reliable bloomer. And she blooms uh, in winter time every year. And, but, there's no scent to her flowers, but, well, you cannot get everything, can you? I mean, this is enough for me. All right, this lovely Phalaenopsis Joy fairy tale from Swarta is still in bloom, even this month. And the old blooms that I showed you last time are a little bit pale now, but they're still looking great. With lovely three lips, the same size lips this time as well as the new spike I was showing you last time. Put out this one, a little bit smaller one still, but yeah, it's been open for a few days now, so I don't think it's gonna get any larger, but that is a little bit deeper in color, since it's a little bit smaller and new, fresh new. So it comes up a little bit darker. But this one looks, um, yeah, this one came out right this time as well. So yeah, it's better. And the plant itself is looking great. And the roots are green. There are many and green. I seem to like it there. And a little mixture of uh, uh, whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> bark. <laughs> bark and perlite. Yes. A lot of ventilation holes in it. I love this orchid. And yeah, the scent reminds me of roses and soap. Yes. I said that quite a lot of times now. But yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> I love this one. I'm gonna get some more peloric orchids when I when I get the chance to get hold of a few of them when the web shops are opening up for delivery when well, when it's hard uh, hard enough outside to deliver orchids to Sweden again yes. and my Miltonia sunset is spiking again and she's still in bloom as well but the blooms are now fading to the color that I really love this pastel color fading pastel color yeah I should have this color the this uh, pastel, light pastel colored 
all of the time, all of the time when it's in bloom. Then I would love it even more. But that is spiking again, as I said, and it's growing. I mean, I had to lift it out of its pot, its 12 centimeter pot, and place it into this 15 centimeter pot instead. Uh, but I don't think this is enough. So uh, I will soon have to switch it to another, uh, upsize it a bit, but <laughs> if I upsize it, I have, I'll have to use um, this size pot. <laughs> it's the next size I can get at my garden center. So, uh, yeah, perhaps if I put a, uh, well, bark, <laughs> perhaps around it, uh, as well as make a lot of ventilation holes to the sides. But yeah, I would just see how she progress. If it's necessary to repot her this year or if I, I shall wait a bit. But we shall see. As I told you, it's she's spiking again here. Putting out uh, a little spike, two flowers even this time. And as I looked, I saw this little spike as well from this new growth. I mean, uh, yeah, it's not much. I mean, this, this is not a massive blooming, but uh, but she's spiking and spiking and spiking. So, well, I really do hope that until summer comes, this new growth here will produce yet another growth that's going to produce a good spike. With a lot of blooms this time, as you can see, that it gave me last summer. So, I love this orchid, and it's a healthy, beautiful one. The scale is almost gone now, so I think that the uh, no, it's not scale. Yeah, I think that the treatment with um, neem oil solution and green soft soap and water did the trick for a lot of my orchids this time. But well, as for everything else. If you use it too many times, the orchids, as well as the bugs, will get used to it and ignore it, <laughs> so to speak. And yeah, we'll have to change uh, substance. We have to change uh, pesticide for a bit and then perhaps switch back to the neem oil solution again. Um, so. This is my Bubophyllum Tarkadum. I had this one for a couple of years now. And she's a reliable bloomer, and she blooms every spring. But when I first got her, she was spiking from everywhere in April. So, this is February, so, well, <laughs> she spiked, I mean, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, perhaps nine spikes. It looks like this from the beginning, and then they develop. So they almost look like the fading. And then it starts to open up these yellow little uh, thingies, little buds. <laughs> and when it's fully opened, it looks like, yeah, I think this is the uh, oldest one. Uh, it's dropped a few of its buds already, but yeah, I think this is a, it's a funny one. I really do love it. Since it's such a reliable bloom, I mean, what else can you ask? I think she's beautiful. Bulbophyllum falcatum, an easy grower, reliable bloomer. And this uh, RLC Alma Keep Kipmale is still holding on desperately to this little, little, little beginning of a bud down there. So <laughs> we shall see about this one. Yes. As well as this one. There's no ID uh, in Cyclia. She's still got her massive set of um, sheath everywhere. But I think it's going to take a while before they develop that. There's something down there at the base, but yeah, it will really take a while, I think. <laughs> so, well, I'm really curious to see what the blooms look like and what kind of... Uh, so I can put an ID to this guy. I don't want no ID. And sickly, I would like to have an ID to this guy. A name. Yes. And what else? If I dig in deep enough to this jungle in here, this is my uh, Encyclia Prismatocarpa. And yeah, she's producing a sheath here. And I think that Pseudobarb is large enough and plump enough to be able to flower for me. It flowered before and uh, yeah, it's got a cascading cluster of uh, many, many spotted flowers on a long regime. So this is going to be fun to see, perhaps when the spring comes or summer, perhaps.
We shall see. Uh, Katlea Bormisnil Parme. She is developing something down there in that sheath. Uh, we shall see. She's not in a good state now. I think she's she's not doing well. The roots aren't that good as I I would like them to be, and she's a bit wrinkly and dehydrated. So, well, maybe it's not wise to let her bloom, but well, she's a Katlea. What to do? Yes. This one. Bring Katlea into Jean Fong, little son, young mean golden boy, the one with a really short name. No, just kidding. Um, she's putting out. Yeah, she's being obviously she's been blooming a lot of times here, as you can see. Uh, but she's putting out a couple of new sheaths here. So we shall see. Now, perhaps it will bloom in springtime. I think it bloomed just uh, before I got it here, as you can see. A couple of old buds that's been cut off. And uh, as soon as I got her, they produced uh, some new canes here. Yeah. And that's the ones that are going to bloom, I hope, this spring. So, another orange splash would be nice, indeed. And this lovely Epidendrum Stanfordianum is um, spiking. And it's forming its buds now. You can see the spots shining through the buds already. So, I think it's going to be a couple of days or a week before they're all open up for me. Or for us, I should say. So, I will film this guy before the end of February, so we can see his lovely flowers. Yeah, and the spike has even branched here in two places. So, it's beautiful. So, now it's unfolded all its buds for you. It took exactly 24 hours for all the intact buds to open 70 inflorescence on one spike one spike that's branching on two places the very same spike and this regime is really thick and it's bending over and it's really pulling the very large cane down to the side and, well, if I'm not careful, the whole plant is going to tip over. Yeah, it's really heavy. And its flowers, uh, I don't remember right now how long they uh, lasted last time. But, um, yeah, I can write a comment here. But they have a slight beautiful scent to them. And uh, it's only noticeable during daytime. Yeah during daytime as it's approaching night time and evening and night time the scent is uh, fading a bit to be strong again the next morning yes this is a really really beautiful specimen this large species Epidendrum stamfordianum blooms about once a year Yes, and surprisingly enough, or shall we say not surprisingly enough at all, my Prostichia cochleada, she's, a, she's still in bloom, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to show this one in bloom in all of my What's in Bloom and Spike videos, <laughs> almost the whole year around. Yeah, now it's got a new, she's got a new set of blooms and a couple of new buds coming up here. From the middle and she's just climbing can you see here you can see where the old flowers has been the ones that's dropped off and yeah so this uh, flower spike this stem we can call it it's gonna be really tall <laughs> with a lot of uh, places where the flowers has been you can see them all you can count them even and then it gets when it gets too tight to bloom it will stop and the stem will um, turn yellow and dry up for you. But she's soon gonna put out a new growth. She blooms on every new king. So, no matter how small, fat, and plump, or slim it is, 
<laughs> it really doesn't seem to make a difference for this guy to bloom. It just blooms and blooms and blooms and blooms. Yeah, this is the oldest one. So she's now turning a little bit yellow, her petals. And this one is a newer one. So it's still more green colored. Yes, but I love it. I love it. I love its re reliability. And I also really do need to show you this one. It's my beautiful Archage Sheathed Sweet Orange from Grob Breschner Orchidine. Yeah, you can see the tag here. It's stuck. <laughs> yeah, can you see that it's forming its buds now? I could see it in this light not many minutes ago. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted you to see the buds shining through the sheath here, but maybe you can see it, but I can. So it's really developing its buds. So uh, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to see its blooms. I mean, they are so lovely. You can see the color combination and the pop up here. And yeah, I'm so happy for this orange, beautiful Kitley Orchid. RTH Chief Sweet Orange. And this is my Phalaenopsis, a recent acquisition. Um, and I thought it was named Haditi. But I guess it's the name of the, uh, uh, perhaps the nursery or perhaps this variation, I mean, on tree trunks wooden trunks I don't know but it's a lovely one anyways and I still love it but it had still a few more buds to open when I got it and it still has uh, but the flower it opened up <laughs> since I got it it's a little bit more pale look at this one it's newly opened and this one the first one to open I guess so perhaps it's a color changer, time will tell, we shall see what happens. At first I thought it was injected, but I cannot see any injection mark to the stem here anywhere. There's nowhere to be found. I've checked I, th I think four times now, so well, without and with the glasses, so no. Maybe it's just a color changer, all right, but I still do love it. It's a wonderful orchid. I think. And down here, I almost forgot about it, but my Phalaenopsis Ludimaniana, which has been in flower for me a couple of times already, um, it's in spike, but I, I forgot to show it to you last time, in my last, I mean, in my previous um, Spike and Bloom video, but it's because I cannot properly see the spike, it's a, uh, and I, I'm not really sure that it's gonna develop I mean here's a little spike yes can you see it down there but at the same time as it developed this spike it also put out a new root from the same spot so it's almost I mean <laughs> suffocating this little guy so I'm not really sure that this one is gonna make it the spike but well, it's not yellow. It's not dried out yet. Not really. So, we shall see. But I wouldn't miss this blooming for the world. Here you can see the spike a little bit more properly, I think. It's a little bit hard to focus on the spike. But it's there, next to the root. And I got this one from Hans Christiansen, Okidegat uh, Nederjet, in Denmark, a couple of years ago as a gift. Uh, it was a cakey. And he took the cakey off his... Uh, large, lovely, lovely, lovely Phalaenopsis Ludemaniana, a grown-up specimen, a really lovely coloured one with deep um, pink colour with a beautiful pattern on. So it really had a nice <laughs> parent, so to speak. So yeah, he told me that this one is going to produce lovely flowers for me. And so it did. So he was right. A lovely, lovely, lovely species. Phalaenopsis. Ludemaniana. So just move over to my kitchen area and this beautiful shelf where I keep my small cattleyas and as well as my seedlings. And look what's here. It's my little Angrecum didieri. I showed this guy a couple of videos ago <laughs> in my video about my two Grawbreshner orchid holes that I made. 
last summer and this one was included. But when I showed this guy I was bragging about his progress. Well, not really, but that at least it had got one more leaf since I got it. But now it's losing it. It's new leaf. Yeah, I'm just gonna move this guy in a, so we can be able to focus a little bit more. Yeah, you see the thingy, the little nubbin at the base to the left? I think that's the flower spike. That should be its first time blooming. Well, sometimes strange stuff can happen when an orchid goes downhill a little bit. It's a survival thing, I guess. It blooms when it thinks it's dying. Well, no point in <laughs> cutting the spike, <laughs> really. So, we'll just have to wait and see what it is. If it's a root, that's a good thing. If it's a spike, well, it's nice, but not really what this plant needs right now to recover. But at least I can, or we can see its beautiful bloom for the first time. So, whatever the outcome, it will be great. And Greckum Digeri. And this lovely Cattleya orchid, my SLC, Sophronides Lelia Cattleya, jewel box. The one that's been growing on from a seedling, or not a seedling, but a very young plant, in my care. Yeah, she's, um, she's always been a nice grower, I mean, a vigorous one. And she bloomed a couple of times before. Yeah, and this is the one with a strange... <laughs> <laughs> and perfect um, flowering behavior <laughs> since it can produce a sheath just as well as it can come directly out of the center a bud or shall I say buds so <laughs> it's a, she's a sequential bloomer a cattleya that's a sequential bloomer that's nice and when you think she's finished flowering she's not she just continues uh, developing some new buds at the base, at the center down there. So, yeah. But I thought this one is going to be a nice new set of blooms. Since this sheath was, I thought it was all filled with stuff, with some buds last week. And the sheath was green as well and new. But no, it's turning black and brown. And uh, I cannot feel anything down there anymore. I, I just have, I must have been imagining it all. But so, but what I noticed is on her latest growth here, this sheath, as well as this sheath, as well as this sheath, are coming out from her latest pseudobulbs. I peeled off the, the old brown sheaths on the kings, but I can see that all three are new pseudobulbs. So, it's not going to be a poor blooming from only one sheath. It's going to be a good blooming from three pseudobulbs at the same time, I imagine. So, at the same time as I'm a little bit disappointed that I cannot show you her beautiful blooms this month or next month, I will be able to show you a good blooming in a couple of months, I think. So, that's good news, not bad. As we'll see, Jewel. Box. This Phalaenopsis has been out for ages, absolutely ages. I mean, it's been blooming constantly since the uh, 20th of uh, July, seven months. And it even continued flowering, or oh, I mean creating buds from the top here at the end of the spike. <sighs> yeah, I just wanted to tell you that it's still in bloom, its last flower. It's a really incredible one, this one. I love it. No ID fell. So now we're almost finished with this quite long video. Uh, I only have two more orchids to show to you this time. And this is the uh, Phalaenopsis, uh, Dendrobium Phalaenopsis that I got at my um, Plantage Mini Orchid haul, I think I called the video. Not long ago, so it's a quite recent uh, acquisition for me. And, as you know, I got the one with three spikes, the most number of spikes, as well as the most number of pseudobulbs. And, yeah, I ordered this guy, I think, twice by now. And, yeah, it's not much happening down there, but 
well, it seemed to be doing great. And uh, I love the, uh, the color combination of green and purple, pinkish purple, as I already said in my previous video. But that can't be said too many times, I think. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. Always when there's a hint of green in it, I always love the, the, the flowers, so yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if there's any scent to it because I, yeah, I have a bit of a cold or I'm allergic to something, I don't know, but I cannot feel any scent to it right now, but well, well, well. I think she's gonna be in bloom even next month. In my next video, Blooms and Spikes in March, so yeah. I can show her to you again before long. This lovely one and I think she's gonna be in bloom for a long time as well it's a long time bloom with this uh, dendrobium phalaenopsis a favorite of mine now over to the last orchid and the last orchid in bloom in this video of February 2021 is my branching Tolumnia gyrek rainbow soft pink uh, she finished blooming one month ago I think a little bit more perhaps and now she's branching in two places. Yes, you can see here. But the buds take a while to develop, so I think you're gonna see this one in bloom in my next In Spike and Bloom in March of 2021 video. Yeah, so Talamnias are really rewarding orchids. And with that said, I'm gonna thank you all for joining in this video, joining me in this video, and looking at my old kids in blue. And stuff in blue. And thank you so very much for watching. And hope to see you next time. And until next time, take care and have a good day. Bye bye.